Hello and welcome. It is 4.30. It is the sixth day of February 2021. And I am the grain in the migraine, the toxic gatekeeper, the man with no plan. Sponsor me because I will sell out Coca-Cola, the OGGM. With the grump of the week, where I talk about bullshit for 10 to 20 minutes of things that annoy me because I'm old and I've earned the right to sit on my porch and yell at you kids to get off my lawn. So there's a couple of things that have come across my my desk this week of just things that make me go, as our senior hall used to say, things that just make you go, hmm, and why? Why do you people say these things? <laughs> But I don't want a shotgun, so I'm just going to address one. And it's an article I saw, and I'm sure it's going to come up again. No one else has mentioned it yet, as far as I know, so I could be the first. But there was an article I saw a couple days ago on some gaming board about how Critical Role is the future of Dungeons & Dragons. And I have a couple issues with that, obviously. Because when am I not complaining about Critical Role? I've made most of my internet profession complaining about Critical Role. But here's, here's, here's why I take umbrage with this guy's statement that Critical Role is the future of Dungeons & Dragons. Critical Role might have been a year ago, but it's not now. I think the Critical Role phenomenon happened in some way, we're all very grateful for the Critical Role phenomenon. It brought hundreds of new people to the game and showing interest in the hobby. How many of them actually stuck around? And they're still playing now? I don't know. I'm going to say probably not all of them. I'm sure for every 10 people that came and said, I saw this thing on the internet of people playing this game with these people doing funny voices, I want to see what it is. Five of those 10 people stuck around like one or two games and then went, yeah, you know what, this isn't for me. Three of the people who are like, you know what, I want this to be exactly like what I saw on the internet and it's not, so eh. And then the remaining are like, yeah, I can work with this. This is cool still, uh, you know, whatever, let's go, let's see. So it was a great shot in the arm for the popularity of the ho hobby, definitely for the financialness of the hobby, and it did shape the past couple of years. I mean, we're still feeling the after effects in the hobby, especially in relation to Dungeons & Dragons, to the critical role phenomenon. Whether you're on the, it is the best thing that ever happened to D&D &D school of thought in regards to critical role, which we know I'm not, you're the, you know, it was good, it was great, I appreciate it, but whatever school of critical role thought, or if you're the, you know what, more negatives out of this came from than positives. Now, my personal experience with the critical for phenomenon has been negative. That said, plenty of people have had a positive experience from the critical role phenomenon and have, you know, embrace the hobby in new and amazing ways that I could never foresee. So just because I had a bad experience with the critical for role phenomenon and I have personal issues with the critical for role phenomenon doesn't necessarily mean it's good or bad. It just is and it just happened and it just managed to hit the nail on the head at the right point in time to bring a lot of people back to the hobby or to the hobby who'd never played before and make Matt Mercer and company a shitload of money. But I'm also not Critical Role's target audience. So the fact that I've had a negative experience with Critical shouldn't mean a damn thing because at the end of the day, I'm not their target audience. So who the fuck cares? <laughs> that said, Critical Role happened, made a lot of money, it brought a lot of popularity to the game, but that was, what, two, three, four years ago? Three years ago? Even two years ago? But today? Eh, is it still a thing? I don't know. I can't remember the last time it's act I mean, it hasn't come up with a conversation in a while. <laughs> 
This is the first I've seen it mentioned in a long time in anything related to the hobby. So is Critical Role the future of D&D? No, probably not. And there's two reasons why Critical Role is not, I don't think, Critical Role is the future of D&D. Reason number one, there are a lot of other people doing the exact same thing that Critical Role did. There were people doing it before, and there are people who have spun up afterwards. So, internet, YouTube being an aspect of D&D, and online gaming being an aspect of D&D going forward, definitely, whether, for, even if I, you know, you know, is going to be a very large part of of the future of Dungeons and Dragons. Dungeons and Dragons, as I know it, will eventually no longer exist, sadly. It will all be in the next 20 years online, probably. Or maybe not. I mean, the numbers sort of speak for themselves. There's definitely highs and lows in the online phenomenon, and they're definitely not as, you know, I don't think there will ever not be a point where we're, you know, we're always going to play D&D face-to-face in some form. Maybe more people will go online, but eventually they'll want to come back. I don't know. It'll go through hills and valleys. But, you know, when you're stuck on the bus for 16 hours and you don't have the internet, you got nothing else to do. D&D. D&D can be played anywhere. The internet requires a lot of work. So, the critical role is not the future of Dungeons & Dragons online community D&D beyond that kind of shit is definitely a large aspect of the future of Dungeons and Dragons but it's not the entirety of the future of Dungeons and Dragons so that's the first part that's wrong with your statement the second part that's wrong with your statement is critical role is not critical at Dungeons and Dragons critical role is its own beast it takes place in the world they created it has a lots of house rules and stuff that is very specific to their environment. If you show up at a gaming table expecting it to be just like at the show, it's not going to happen. And it was never going to happen, but now more than ever, it's not going to happen because they have taken the rules and rewritten them to be appropriate for them. So they're not playing D&D. They're playing Critical Role, the D20 role-playing game. The only similarities are that some of the classes are still the same, some of the races are still the same, and you still roll a D20. But let's face it, they're playing their own game. And now that they have their own publishing company and have completely separated themselves from Geek and Sundry and uh, Wizards of the Coast, and they've already released a game, what's it called? Bard Town or Bard Dumb or something like that. And they're releasing some board games. And they've got another bo- role-playing game in the pike. They're going to make an official Critical Role role-playing game. Much the same way Pathfinder is technically D20, but a completely different entity. And you're not playing D&D when you're playing Pathfinder. Because it's, you know, it's a completely different entity. Just happens to use the same dice. They will make their own critical role playing game. It will call Critical Role the role playing experience or something like that. Or Adventure in the World of Mercerdom or what I don't know what they'll call it. But they own the rights to Critical Role. Wizards of the Coast doesn't own the rights. Matt Mercer and Company owns the rights to everything that is associated with Critical Role. Even if something says Dungeons and Dragons presents Critical Role. Mercer and Company is getting 90% of that paycheck. And you don't think they're going to want to get 100% of that paycheck and not have to pay Wizards of the Coast or D&D Beyond a dime anymore to use their property? No, they are going to create their own role-playing game. They have their own publishing company. They have completely separated themselves from Creek and Sundry. They have more or less separated themselves from Wizards of the Coast. I wouldn't be surprised at some point in time they separate themselves from D&D Beyond and start their online community. Lord knows they have the followers and they have the wherewithal to comp- create their own online community that is separate from D&D Beyond. Because why pay Wizards of the Coast a percentage of your income 
if you don't have to. They could go off and do the same thing Pezo did and create their own beast. And who knows how many people will tag along for that ride. I'm sure a large percentage, at least for a while, will be like, fuck d and I want to play the Critical Role role-playing game. Fuck d and I want to play Pathfinder, so even though it's the fucking same thing. And maybe they'll use the D20, D6 things that we know, or maybe they won't. Maybe they'll come up with their own system. I don't know. It depends how far they want to go. If I was them, I'd want to separate myself from Wizards of the Coast as much as possible because, <laughs> let's face it, Wizards of the Coast is having a history of screwing people over, and every single solitary dime is mine, and I don't have to share a dime with Wizards of the Coast. So I'd probably create my own system, too. But even if I didn't, even if I followed the OGL um, Pathfinder school of thought and made the critical role, the role-playing game, still a D20 system, still that means that 99.9% .9 of the money is mine as opposed to, you know, whatever it is now, 85, 87, 80, 90% of the money. Cutting themselves off from Wizards of the Coast and creating a critical role role-playing game within the next three to five years, especially now that they have their own publishing company, is inevitable. It's just good business, and it just makes sense. They can say, oh, I love d and I'm completely loyal to d and but at the end of the day, they're business people, and this is their future, and they want to be able to, you know, pass something on to their kids. Um, you know, and whatever... So, I mean, yeah, they created their own publishing company because they want to do their own thing. So anybody who's like, oh, they're never going to make it their own. Yeah, they already pretty much have made their own role-playing game. What they're playing isn't D&D. &D. So, yeah. So that's reason number two. Critical Role is not the future of Dungeons & Dragons because Dungeons & Dragons is Dungeons & Dragons. And that goes in this little box. And Critical Role is Critical Role. And it goes in this little box. And for... A short period of time, the two boxes intertwined and was very successful, very profitable for everybody involved. But Wizards of the Coast is going to come to a point where they don't want to share any more money with Matt Mercer and company. And Matt Mercer and company is going to come to a point where they don't want to share any more money with Wizards of the Coast. And as we just saw, Wizards of the Coast is happy to screw people over who they've done business with in the past. Dragonlance. So if, th if it's to their best profitable for Hasbro to make the most money possible, a bottom line, keep their board of directors and their shareholders happy, they will completely abandon Mercer and company at the first chance if they think they're going to make more money by not being part of Critical Role. Right now, it's profitable to everybody involved, but at some point in time, Somebody's going to go, you know what? I'm going to make more money without you. So right now, the two boxes are intertwined. But the future, they're not going to be intertwined. They, they are two separate individual entities. You have to think of them as two separate individual entities. Dungeons and Dragons, Critical Role, two separate entities. Right now, they're in a cohabited, symbiotic relationship. But they are both drifting off from each other. Critical Role made their own publishing company. What you see them playing on the show, that's not D&D &D anymore. That's their own little D20 wonderful creation. So Critical Role is not the future of Dungeons & Dragons. They have their own independent future. And I don't know what it's going to be. If I was them, I would think I'm going to make my own stuff, shit and publish my own shit. Why else start my own publishing company? Especially a game-related publishing company. And do everything I can to monetize and make money off of my property, which is Critical Role and everything associated with Critical Role. And Dungeons & Dragons is going to do whatever they're going to do with 6th edition. And, you know, for every good choice Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro makes with, in regards to Dungeons & Dragons, they make 10 bad choices. So who knows what the future of Dungeons & Dragons is going to be. It does have a future. It's never going to go away. It will always be around in some form. But Critical Role is not the future of D&D, &D, and that's why. At least that's what I think. But 
I will gladly say the opposite if Critical Role wants to sponsor me, because I will sell out. What do you think? Do you agree with me that Critical Role is not the future of Dungeons & Dragons, that they are two separate entities and they will eventually continue to go their own way? Or do you disagree? And do you think, no, that they're going to continue to live harmoniously together and that Critical Role is the future of Dungeons & Dragons? Let me know down below. Uh, if, you're, if you're pissed off at me and you're going to unsubscribe because of this, let me know why you're unsubscribing, because I can't fix it if you don't tell me what's broken. Uh, if you have, And speaking of subscriptions, if you haven't subscribed yet, maybe now's a chance to support this rocket to see where it's going. If I hit 500 subs by August 4th, I'm going to do something crazy. Till then, I am your grumpy guide to all things gaming. The grain and the migraine. The toxic gatekeeper. The man with no plan. The face with no trace. The OGGM. And I will talk to you losers later. <laughs>